Hey guys, welcome back to another AutoCAD video tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make a herringbone gear. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you're going to want to do is download my pre-made template onto the computer. If you look in the description below you're going to find that and that's just going to help us save some of the steps that we've kind of already did in the previous video. So go ahead, download that, and once you have it somewhere, go over to the Insert tab, Insert, click on that, and we're going to Browse for our gear. I saved mine in a folder, so here it is, it's the gear template. I'm going to click on that, press Open, and now we have it loaded in. Now what I'd recommend doing is adjusting your scale. Right now it's set to 1, but I actually want to change that to 10. So we're going to make it 10 times its current size, which is going to be the correct settings, at least for us. So if these are all 10, go ahead and press OK. You'll notice that we are holding the cross section of the herringbone gear on our computer. And I'm going to click somewhere on our screen and place it down. Before we move any further, make sure that your ortho mode is on. So I'm going to click on ortho mode and also make sure that we have our object snap settings all set up. So here, object snap settings, I'm going to click on that and I'm going to click select all. In addition, it's going to be a little more useful if I have more grid spaces to work with. So head over to the snap and grid tab and I want you to change the grid X spacing to 0.1 inches. And that's just going to give us a much more refined grid marker. OK, I'm going to press OK. Now we have our grids in place, we have all that in place. Let's go ahead and draw a circle and that's going to be the thickness of our gear. So I'm going to type circle onto the screen, enter, and I'm going to go from the center of the gear over to this corner over here. I'm going to click it. It's going to snap into place. And I'm not sure if you notice this, but if you hover over the original template that we press, you'll notice that when I'm even hovering over one of the teeth, it's lighting up the entire gear section. The entire gear section. And we don't want that because I can't adjust this, I can't rotate this if these are in the way. So we're going to use a command called explode and explode is going to separate all our different lines that are connected from one another. So notice when I hover it lights up. I'm going to type X on the keyboard that's for explode and I'm going to press enter and now I'm going to click on this and enter. And if you notice now when I hover over these lines they all stick to their shape. They don't move around. So I've separated those lines by using the explode command. OK, cool. Let's go ahead and take what we have so far and copy it over. I'm going to select it all, use the copy command, enter, and I'm going to click at the center of the gear and I'm going to go up vertically. And let's go up a total of 0.4 units and I'm going to press enter again. OK, that's looking pretty good. Let's also go ahead and rotate this tooth 30 degrees. So go ahead and type in rotate, enter, and we're going to click on that, enter. And for our base point of the tooth, we're going to select the center of the gear. And then what I want you to do is I want you to type in 30. For 30 degrees, enter. And if you do it correctly, the tooth should offset 30 degrees from the original. Cool. So, so far so good. Let's go ahead and extrude this upwards. This is the outer part, so use the extrude command. So extrude, whoops, enter. And I'm going to select from here, enter. I'm going to go up to pretty much the center of the object. So right over there. Now I'm up to the second layer which is at 0.4. Alternatively I could have typed in 0.4 and that would have worked just fine as well. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this in our shaded view. You'll notice right away that things are looking pretty good. 
Okay, let's take care of these teeth now. What we're going to want to do is loft them together to create that beveled tooth effect. So type in loft on your screen, enter, and then click on the top gear tooth, followed by the lower gear tooth, and then press enter twice, enter, enter, and you're going to create one of the teeth of your gear. Of course, you need at least 20 of these, so we're going to actually pattern this 20 times around the circumference of the cylinder. So go ahead and type in array, enter, and we're going to select the tooth, and then I'm going to kind of hover here and I'm going to press enter, and it's asking us which type of array we would like. Since we want to go around the surface of this object, we're going to want to use a polar array. So I'm going to click polar, and I'm going to use this axis, the center, as my axis of rotation. I'm going to click over there, and now we have six teeth, which isn't quite what I want, so we're going to type in items, or I for items, so I'm going to type in I, enter, and now I'm going to type in the number of teeth I want. So I'm going to type in 20, enter, and if you did it all correctly, you should be looking at a 20 tooth gear. So let's clean it up a little bit. We have to get rid of some of the things in the middle, and we're going to use the press pull tool to get rid of those things. So type in press on your screen, press pull, enter, and I'm going to first click on the center ring, and I'm going to drag that down over here. I'm going to click, and if you did it correctly, it should cut the material out from the interior. Let's do another press pull, except this time it's going to be for this section, and we are going to go down. It looks like when we go down, it's positive. So let's go down a whopping, let's say, 0.1. Oops, 0.1, enter. There we go. Now we can just go ahead and select all these lines that we created prior, and we can just use the key on the keyboard to delete them. So all you need to do is kind of hover over the line itself, click on it, and then use the delete key. Um, if they're not in your way or if they're not bothering you, you don't have to delete them. It's completely up to you. Uh, I can understand that sometimes you're just fine, especially if you accidentally click the wrong thing. Um, when clearing out unwanted lines. Okay, this is looking pretty nice. Let's go ahead and fill it the insides. I'm going to use the fill it command, enter, and I'm going to select these two lines, or let's type in my expression first. Okay, let's go 0 0.03, enter. I'm going to enter, and now it's filleted on there. Let's go ahead and do the same for that interior. So fill it, enter. I'm going to select this corner edge here, and then 0 0.03, enter, enter. So two enters, and hopefully your fill it command worked, and we have a nice, nice smooth area for our herringbone gear. OK, let's wrap things up with a 3D mirror. What I'd like you to do is type in mirror, and then go to the second option, not the first one, Mirror 3D. Click on that. You're going to want to select your entire object and press Enter. And then you have to specify the plane which you'd like to mirror it on. So since we're going to project this on the downward, downward end of this gear, we are going to be on the XY plane. Yeah, the XY plane, not the Z. Z is going to be turned, if you think about it. So we're on the XY. This one over here, we can just go ahead and click on it. And then we need to specify one point on that plane. The best point to select is the center point. So I'm going to go to the center of this object, and I'm going to click. And then it's like, do you want to delete the source object? Uh, we do not. We want to keep the original. So I'm going to go ahead and click No and then press escape a few times, and there you go. If you clicked it correct, you're going to notice that we have designed a herringbone gear, and a pretty good one at that. OK, that's going to conclude this tutorial. Uh, if you like what you see, please give me some suggestions for things I can do in future videos. 
or just tell me to make more videos and I will make some more videos. Okay, I'll see you later. Bye.